Good morning. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Loreen. It's about the 14th or something like that of March and we have a really, really sharp, bright day. Not right at the moment, so the light might change. And it's freezing cold out. Although the cat was convinced to go outside, she sees the green grass and it's like, I need to chomp on grass. So, um, what's that got to do with anything? Nothing. I'm just, you know, babbling. I am going to talk to you today about a book that I have real ambivalence around. It is uh, the, the Spoon Stealer by Leslie Crew. It's her latest offering. She's a Canadian author and um, read the reviews of on Goodreads and a few other places and everybody loves it. Now I don't have a physical copy, I had to return it because there were so many holds on it. So today's challenge is to figure out how to put a card in. So somewhere in this little frame, you will see a picture of a book. Now, I hope that worked. Um, okay, I've read a good lot of Leslie Cruz's works. She's got eight or 10, I do have it written down. She has uh, 10 other books that precede this one and I would say that I've enjoyed most of them That's why I picked this up without even really reading what the book was about. So I, she's definitely a solid author um, I think she's living in Montreal at the moment The book is about uh, Emmeline Emma, we'll call her Emma, Emmeline, Emmeline, not sure, but um, Emma has been um, born on a farm in Nova Scotia into a basket of clean laundry and um, her mom just gave birth and there she was. So it was kind of a family running joke that all the sheets had to be rewashed. So that happens pretty quickly in the book. And we meet her family and most important in her family really is uh, Emma's mom and her brother Tom. So it's with these two individuals that she has the strongest relationships with. Um, she's at, it's at a time in the world where women really aren't given much to do and Emma just doesn't fit in. She's, um, she's a big woman, like just, you know, big bone. She's a good, healthy woman. And so physically um, and intellectually, she's just, oh. Emma just doesn't fit in with her community. She, she's an odd duck. And her brother Tom is one who's taken great affection to her. Uh, she's his little sister and he's taken her under his wing and so they have a great bond but then um, Tom and his older brother have to go off to World War One uh, bad things happen um, Emma is just distraught over what happens and uh, she goes to England to look after things she's only about 16 when she takes off and her time in England is probably her most adventuresome time. She really, I mean, she's a young girl with no skills to speak of, and she manages to make a life for herself in England. She's back and forth between Nova Scotia and England, and uh, she is developing a life that is not um, ordinary in the sense that she's, she's not a typical nurse or teacher or, or wife. And um, she meets a lot of interesting people along her chosen career path. Along the way, um, it turns out the first spoon that she has, her brother had given to her before he went off to war. Now, the spoon stealing piece, I um, kind of forgot about. Kept thinking, I don't understand why this chap, this thing's called the spoon stealer. Um, it's in the story, but I don't think it features particularly. I, I'm not even... Yeah, she doesn't have a compulsive need to steal, steal spoons. She's not walking around with pockets loads, but uh, she has the occasional urge. And yet these urges, to me, didn't resonate in any kind of a way. I'm not sure that the, the event of the spoon stealing really tied into her um, life afterwards. It was sort of a momentary urge, except for one spoon stealing event where she's trying to get something from the library, and this is in England, and she's taking a creative writing course where you are um, writing your own memoir. And she and the instructor are at loggerheads like bang. And the women in the writing group uh, gravitate towards Emma and not to the woman who is uh, teaching the course. So in the end, they uh, this little group uh, 
after the course is over, they go to Emma's home and she reads the remainder of her memoir to them. And they're, they're developing bonds through the process of her reading her memoirs. And by the time we finish the book, Emma is in her 70s. And we have seen her whole history. And she, <laughs> she has the ability to kind of stick her nose in people's business and come up with just exactly the right solution for all their problems. She's a meddler. Uh, but this is where I kind of went off with what people were appreciating about, appreciating about her. Um, every time she meddled, it just miraculously resolved in what was in her, what was her intention. Things just always seemed to transpire. I said to Steve, it's a little bit like, uh, if you've ever read Pollyanna, it's a bit like Pollyanna meets that moment in a, mo in a movie where the protagonist drives up to the front door of the bank and there's a huge parking spot waiting for them. It's just everything turns out right. I, In my opinion, I mean it's a good plot, there are plenty of good uh, um, adventures along the way and there's certainly some interesting characters uh, among which are Vera, the talking dog. Um, quite a sweet little character actually. But in my opinion I don't believe that the author was really distant from the topic matter um, in a uh, what's and that makes sense because it's based on a relative's adventures of her life and so forth so there's a family familial connection in there but it's like this woman can just never do anything wrong and if she does do something wrong it just works out so the only few times that she's chastised it just there's a bit of sadness, there's a bit of, you know, oh gee whiz, I wish I hadn't have done that kind of thing, but uh, it just all comes out in the end. And it's too, it's too good. It's too, it's too on the surface. It's too, um, I don't know, it's too confectionary. I just didn't love it. I wanted to see the bad side of Emmeline. I wanted to see um, more of Vera's character, which was as the dog occasionally a smart ass little dog and I felt that was the only character where we saw a full rounding. Now when we come back to the issue of mom, mom has uh, not been able to reconcile herself to Emmeline and uh, particularly when her sons go off to war and Emmeline Emma stays at home. Uh, they just seem to have one of those abrasive relationships. I think it's it's um, the sort of typical mother-daughter relationship where there's love, or maybe there isn't, and we only say that to make ourselves feel good, I'm not sure, but they sure can't get along. And so this is a driving force in um, Emma's decision makings to stay away from home. And her relationship with her brother Tom also follows her strongly through uh, her life, which I, again, I just didn't feel was really authentic because uh, she was about 16 when he went off to war and I you know I appreciate that early relationships do stick with you but so many things happened to her in the subsequent years that I'm thinking that intensity should have mellowed in some fashion and it doesn't it's just very intense all the way through so um, again I just felt that the plot lines around that relationship were unlikely or uh, or they may happen, but people are doing it because you just want to make an old lady happy. So that gives you a whole lot of vague ideas <laughs> about what's going to happen in the book. I um, think it's worth recommending. I gave it a three out of five because I didn't like those things. The Goodreads and other uh, reviewers gave it a much higher ranking. Um, it's a book. It's a feel-good book. If you're looking for something to beat the blues, this is a nice one. And if you're looking for something where you're just glad that nobody's been murdered and nobody's been um, absconded with and there are no plagues, uh, you know, that's a good choice too. Um, but I, it's my least favorite of them all and that's too bad because, yeah, I, do, I have liked her other books. Well, what's that got? Well, the next book I'm going to talk to you about, not today, because I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter, is Jane Steele. And that will be on my next, so dun dun dun, cliffhanger. Come back for a review on Lindsay Fay's Jane Steele. She murders a lot of people. So, 
I hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.